Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless guide on this week's Master Nightfall, which is Scarlet Keep. These are the aspects and the fragments I'm using. I'm, I am doing this on Voidwalker. I'm using the hand cannon for Unstoppable. I'm using the Arsenic Bite for Barrier, and that's going to be doing most of the damage in here. And the Galahorn. And you can see here, if you, if you really want to go in depth on the mods that I'm using, then you can always pause the video and have a real good look. Uh, but I will be speaking about the mods I've, I'm using as I go through. It's all an elemental well build with a lucent finisher on, on my bond. So when we get in here, I'm going to throw a grenade and then I'm going to break this this knight's shield and just let the, let the grenade deal with these adds. And as you can see, I've got two elemental ordnance grenades on. Uh, and I've got Bountiful Wells, and I've got Seeking Wells, so I'm basically going to be making wells like nobody's business. And as you can see, I've got Devour on as well. So uh, that's going to be really the main parts of the arsenal of these things. So what you've really got to watch out for in this strike is there's two main kind of things. Obviously, you've got the champions, but you've got uh, Arc Burn. So it's acute art burn, so 50% extra incoming, and you do 25% extra outgoing. That's just arc. And as you can see there, that uh, fire, put, fire put, I think it's called, which basically uh, when you kill an, an, an acolyte, uh, they drop a fire pit at the, at the location where they died. But there's also, I think there's a, there's another modifier on where uh, if you... If you get hit by a grenade, it weakens you. So just be very careful with the incoming grenades. Don't take any chances. Lucent Finisher, I've spoken about this in previous videos, but if you've never seen any of those, Lucent Finisher is basically, if I finish a champion, I'm going to get a brick of heavy. If you're in a fire team, it's an Oprah Winfrey moment. Everybody gets heavy. So as you can see, I'm doing most of my work from range here. It's a very clever thing to do because they're going to be hitting hard. We've set ourselves up to to be... So, obviously, you've got the, the additional 50% incoming arc damage. So, knights and wizards are going to be even more potent. We've got a double uh, a double arc and solar, the, the thermal shock plating mod on. So, each of them gives us 20% reduction. So, we've reduced that incoming arc damage from... 50% extra to 10% because it's 20% per mod and I've got two of them on. So this is where really the strike for me starts. As soon as I come in, I throw a grenade at that side because we're going to have a barrier. And ideally what I want is, you know, between the grenade and the Galahorn I'm going to put on him, I want him to go. Controverse with with uh, these uh, mod, the, the mod build-up setup that I've got. Basically every time I get a grenade kill, I'm going to produce, as you can see, those elemental whales. And uh, any time I get close to them, uh, they'll come towards me, which gives me... It will give me more of my lowest energy back, which is the grenade. And I've put... Because I've got bountiful whales on, uh, I can produce more more whales for each of the, the actual mod that I've got on. So because I've got two elemental ordnance, I will produce three on the initial kill. And then if I get multiple kills with it, I'll produce another three. Now, you can double down. There's, there's other mods you can add into this build. You see those whales coming towards me. The, there are other mods you could add into the whale, into the build. You could get your super back faster. You could uh, put on uh, the damage resistance, uh, which is a void mod. So so just, just to let you guys know, uh, Melee Whale Maker, I've got that on, on the... the, the Melee will maker and the, uh, the, the the elemental ordnance go on any piece of armor. Uh, seeking wells go on an arc piece of armor, and bountiful wells go on a solar. So if you want to have that but that set up the same as I've got it, then that's what you'll need to have: is at least have an arc and a solar piece of armor. Uh, and and basically you'll never you'll never run out of. Uh, you'll never run out of grenade energy. And, and if you use your whale, you use your melee, it gives you those back as well, but I think it gives you more to your lowest piece, lowest uh, charged uh, ability. You could put Will of Tenacity on as well, which is a, a void mod, which basically does roughly the same thing as Protective Light used to do. It lasts for about five seconds, 
uh, every time you pick up a, a well, you'll get another five seconds. So you'll reset that timer. So, as I say, as I said, you, you've seen here what, what I like to do when I come in here is obviously take care of the barriers first. When we come from the other side, you can jump once you pick up the orb. I normally just throw a grenade in here to clear any ads and then Galahorn the, the boss, uh, the wizard. And then you can jump up on top of the, the pillar to take out the barrier. When you're coming from this direction, you can't. So what I suggest doing is putting down the, the charge here, throw a grenade, get, get a galleon, get ready to break this champion's shield because, as you've seen there, if you don't break his shield quick enough, he will heal your shield and then you'll start to regenerate. So once you get up here, after you've dunked, this is the herb, a second orb. Now you're going to get Cursed Thrall, Explosive Thrall. And because we don't have a mini map, because uh, Chaff is on, we, we don't actually see where they are. So, you know, I, I, I like to, as you see there, just having a little look around. Uh, I like to just have a look before, you know, you don't want to go up there and just, you know, you think all the ads are gone. Always prepare for one of them hiding. Even if they don't, just think like they are. So once you've dunked those two, I'm going to pre-nade here because you're going to get a bunch of ads. And you see that nade just draws draws ads in. But you've got to, you can't push too far. See how I'm back in, back down because there's an unstoppable. This is our first unstoppable. So I'm just going to back away. You get two of these Revenant Knights with the shields. Now, if you're doing this on the Warlock, see how the, the melee can give you a bit of time. Now I can finish him if he gets too close. So you've got some Thrall and those two guys there. Then you've got the Unstoppable Ogre. Now really, uh, I think this first rocket is going to just attack those ads. I think it does a little bit to him, not much. So just don't take any chances because we're not set up to take, to really be able to tank void damage. What I am doing, as you can see at the bottom there, I've got three heavy. Galley holds seven. So I just want to bring them down so I can finish them. 25% additional arc means our... Our uh, bow, is, it, it will do reasonable damage. And the reason I picked this, you'll see there with the explosive payload, when when he, when he takes when he takes damage, it's, it's about ten thousand damage he's taking. It's why I chose an arc bow with explosive payload. There there, there are other bows that you can use. The 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 wolf tone draw is a very good arc bow. It actually has more impact than than the arsenic bite, but with the explosive payload, that just makes up for it. Another thing you want to do after you've taken that, so obviously, if you can entice the overload down, you see me finish them and I got some heavy. Take out as many of these snipers up here, these acolytes, before you get up. Uh, there'll always be a couple left left up here, and as you can see, I've got an absolute, an absolute ton of heavy up here now. What I do in this section is I jump down See, I'm already charging. I activate the ads and then straight back up. Because when the ads come in, you're going to get two wizards. One left, one right. So we're going to try and take both of them from here. Now, as you can see, that second wizard took advantage of the cover. Unfortunately, I never tried to do it again. So that's the two wizards down. You will, you, because the grenade took out most of the enemies, got nothing between us and the next section of ads. Now, when you get up to this, run up this... Uh, bridge there's there's a little little pillar up the top as soon as you get close to that you're going to get ads spawn left and right and a shrieker in front of you so i'm going to just pre-need the left and then bang once you take the shrieker out you're, you're not home and dry obviously there's a lot of income and damage uh see there champion and all the rads and i just want to get him out the way i'm not really bored about getting a finisher on him to get heavy. I just want him out the way because the other thing I haven't mentioned is it's double Vanguard XP. So if you're still looking for uh I if you're still looking for the seasonal weapon or you want to get the 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 ornament for it or whatever it is you're wanting, just rewards. It's a really good week to farm because it's the, the Scarlet Keep is is not as intimidating it's, it, a lot of people don't like this because of its uh, 
because of its length and its and its perceived difficulty, and I can understand that one hundred percent. But I am telling you, it's it's this always happens with masters or or nightfalls of any of any type. If you remember, uh, if you think back to when Glassway first came out, it was like, oh my god, this thing is the worst nightfall we've ever had. No, it's just another nightfall. You know, hello, it's difficult, but. You know, it always seems like after a nightfall has been out for a while, it's like the difficulty. I don't know if it if it if it does go down. Now I've decided. I I'm unsure whether I'm actually going to try and finish this champion. If I can break his shield here quick enough, there we go. Then I might. When you're finishing a champion, if you've got Lucent Finisher on, which goes on your class item. Uh, Try and finish him into into some kind of a wall or a side bit because wh whichever direction you finish the bot the champion in or any, even the, the the lucent hive because it works on those as well, whichever direction you finish them in, that's the direction the heavy will go. So if you finish them off the map in that direction, then your heavy is going to go off the map. So now we're at the plate section, literally very straightforward. Uh, the reason I almost died there, and it really is straightforward, is because I thought my Galahorn would one-hit them, because it normally does one-hit those champions. This is the basics of it. When you activate a plate, that well, that first plate, you're going to get a wizard. Then you're going to get a whole bunch of these acolytes, right? You see, I'm just making sure all the acolytes are dead. Then, once you cleanse the plate there's still an acolyte up there he is just to our right there's two up once you cleanse the plate i'll just throw one up there you're gonna get a champion what you've got to watch out for when you get the champion especially this first champion right we're not bored about finishing them we're just gonna go for the kill is you're gonna get a whole host of these uh thrall charging you Be very careful and taking out the champion especially if you're rocketing or supering or whatever because these thrall there will always be more of them than you think. In fact, the very first time I came in to do this this week, uh, I did, I thought I'd killed them all. Went to finish, went to, went to fire the rocket, and uh, Acolyte popped out of nowhere and just killed me. So, be very careful. So, again, we're in the same scenario. When you act, come over to this, so, so when you activated the first plate, that's what you got. You got uh, a wizard and some Acolytes. Uh, what happens now is when you stand on, when you come next to, near to the next plate, you are going to get an Acolyte and and some Wizards. And then once you get onto the plate, after a, after a couple of seconds, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, a wave of ads spawn up, uh, a wave of ads spawn up, which is two Acolytes to the right, two Acolytes to the left, and you're gonna get a Barrier Champion. You, you'll get that before you've took the plate on this one, right? You see, I hadn't taken the plate. It's, you know, it's just, it, it, once, you, once you've done, maybe, I don't know, 50% of the plate, I'm just coming back because I wasn't sure if I got grenaded there by, by an acolyte. And because there's no, ch because we've got chafe on, uh, or chaff, whichever way you want to say it, uh, you can't tell. So come over close to this this uh, this uh, wizard. So we got we got the the acolytes and the wizard, and again exactly the same way. Uh, oh, we'll take a little bit heavy there. I hate this mechanic where the ads literally they they really do run away now. So again, same thing. We took out the wizard, took out the acolytes. I'm going to charge a grenade. Thought that that's thought, because it'll be a set ads come from the corner on one side, and then and then uh, another couple from the other side. So as you can see here, champions come out. I'm looking. I'm wondering whether I should finish them. No need. I've got heavy line about. Uh, I've still got five. But I'm pretty sure there was a brick line about. That's why I'm up looking about. There it is. Take this plate and that's a section done. So each plate, the first plate you step onto, once you activate the first plate, you'll get a wizard and you'll get some acolytes. Clear those. Once you've took the plate, you'll get a champion. Then right and left, once you get close to the plate, you'll get a wizard and some acolytes. And once you start to take the plate, 
then you'll get a champion coming from directly in front of you. And that's it. That is this section done. Now, it's basically a bit of a gauntlet run to the boss. This wasn't a, diff a long nightfall. I think it took me like 28 minutes, which for this is, is, is a reasonably a reasonably uh, paced run. Uh, knowing where the champions are, knowing where you can stop, you know, where you can attack enemies from safely. It's all part and parcel. Now, in this... I, do, I, I want to say I don't use any cheeses or any, any anything like that because that that really is correct uh but to say it like that would suggest that i'm against that which i'm not you know if, because if you're doing a gm and you're using a cheese or you're using you know some something like that fine on you go but i i pretty much do all of this just straight as a straight as you straight as you like uh because there was no need to do it any other way what I was doing just before I come up to that champion was the champion disappears and I was just sometimes you expect him to disappear and he doesn't and I was just making sure he he was still he had disappeared. So luckily what I done was I overthrew that. So there's some snipers there and and it really worked well because it took the snipers out. So you get some acolytes here, uh, some snipers and some thrall and, and then when you move up here, you're going to get these ads. So what we want to try and do is take out... I'm going to let this champion go. I'm not going to try and take him right now. Got my grenade back. So now I'm just going to put it back on him. And now I'm going to finish him. But I've got to be careful. So I don't care about the heavy. Not so much. Uh, because I know I've got a brick back here. I did want that brick when I say I don't care but it, it's not the end of the world that I had to finish him the way I did I just when I went to finish him I didn't want him running all the way over to the rest of those ads because there's another champion and there's uh, a shrieker there but uh, I did want to finish him and try and drop a bit of heavy for myself so as you can see it's not a good idea I was luck uh, luckyish because I've got uh, Devour take any acolytes out because they're snipers so i'm going to run up here run down here activate the shrieker you see there he's, he's doing a little bit of fire on us but because because that's not uh a main thing a main damage so we're just going to throw that grenade over there if i can get a finish if i can't i can't the grenade will probably kill him that's fair enough uh because void isn't the main the main damage, it, it's, you're kind of caught, you know, betwixt and between. Void isn't the main damage. It's not the burn, so you know it's not really going to hurt too much. But we don't have any void resist on. So when you get up here, I'm just going to throw a grenade up here. Now there was other things you could do up here that because it's been so long since I've since I've done this, I can't remember. There was another way to do this part. But I'm just doing it the way that I, I've always known. So the champion's there. He's too close. He was moving. So I have to get him into a finishable, finishable uh, section. So I can get that heavy. There we go. We've got full heavy. Now, now we're at the lift. Now I have recently found out there's a way that you can... There's an emote that you can use to set, to back in to one of these pillars and just use the emote. I think it was the the emote from the end of last season. Uh, and you can just you can just emote and it will put you back into the wall. What I ended up doing was and if you're doing it on GM it'd probably be a little bit uh, tougher is just taking out any of them that, that that were in the area. And if I felt like I was getting melted a bit too much I just I just moved into a different piece of cover. The way to know what, if you're in the right cover is, obviously, those alcoves, those openings, some of them will be open and some of them will be closed. The ones that are open are going to get ads. So try and minimise you, your your involvement with those ads by making sure the cover you're in is in more cover uh, against those openings. You know, make sure that... Because they won't be spread all the way round. There'll be, like, a bunch of them on the, the left side or whatever... Uh, but they won't all be on one side. So, 
there'll be a side or one of those little little platforms, one of those little pillars that won't ha that you can get behind. It's good cover that will allow you to block most of the incoming sniper shots. When you get in here, as you see there, there's two. What there, there was uh, there was a wizard in the center. You'll have two champions and a bunch of acolytes, and then. You know, what I like to do is, uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you take right or left, but just get in, get, get the ads taken out quickly, because sometimes the ads from the other side will come out to see what you're doing in this area. They won't come into where the wizard is, they'll come out into the left area. So get your get your grenade down. You see me there looking, the bulk of the, the open doors are, are, are this side. There might be one on behind us. Uh, but we just go back over here as you can see this was the right place because there was n none of them spawned behind us that's the way it'll be on each left section there will be one side that's kind of maybe got one or two ads that will spawn on it uh, in this section we're going to have two wizards one right one left there's only one opening to get in and it will have an unstoppable so again trusty pre-nade that'll take out the acolytes stop the ogre and then throw our, our super which will take care of the unstoppable gold you see those uh as i say that you can you could either have if you don't want if you didn't feel like you needed to have all that uh grenade energy you could put on well a tenacity or you know something to to, to you know uh, get your super back faster and you know, when you pick them up or whatever it is you want to have but Another thing I haven't mentioned this the whole run, but I did say if you really are interested in exactly what mods I was using, then you can always look at the start. I have got ashes to assets on my helmet, which is a solar needs to go onto a solar helmet. Uh, so I have got that on, so I am getting uh, quite a lot of super energy for a, for a, you know not just singular grenade kills. If you can get a bunch of kills with one grenade. You'll, you'll see when we get up to the boss room, you will get quite a bit of super energy back. Now, let's talk a little bit about the boss room. Um, the way we're going to be doing it is there's a little bit of cover. As soon as you go up, uh, there's a little bit of cover behind you to the right, right at the back of the map. You can better cover in there. If you can do enough damage to the, to the wizard right off the bat, then you get the adds out faster and, you know, everything goes a little bit smoother. I'm just having a look behind. We seem to be very clear behind us. That's exactly what I was saying. If it, if they do throw a grenade, just back away out of the grenades kind of range. So when you get up here, there is a little bit of cover that in that direction, this direction. Uh, and then there's two wizards. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to throw a grenade directly in, in the middle of the two wizards, which drags both of them together. And one Galahom, uh coupled with the the grenade should take the two wizards. So, I didn't have my super. Uh, and you can see there, for some reason, I thought I had it. So I jumped up uh, and thought I would melee the, melee the sky. <laughs> now, there's a lot of arc knights here. Which is why I went with an arc bow. Just to get that additional... That additional... Uh, damage to be able to take it take advantage of the arc damage now where we are here ads can come over here make no mistake about it ads can come over here and and once in a while like this the knight will so but as you can see they'll come over and most of the time they'll either fall off the map or they'll or to you know to themselves they'll be like hell am i doing over here and they'll try and run away really quickly that guy actually got stuck and couldn't run away he wanted to so again you see if you just back along this edge bit just move them away with uh with the warlock's force melee and there we go once the once the ads that are pushing you see i'm just gonna toss a little needy up there and i'll just break that knight shield which will help me melt him when you took the any ads you can see, right? And if the boss doesn't unshield, 
Right, I'm just looking to see what the boss has, but if the boss does, she is unshielded. Uh, you'll you know that some of the ads are hiding. So, there we go. Just going to back away in here. Be very careful because the same thing that kind of stops... The same thing that stops us, or stops the ads from coming out to get us, is this little... This little th it's kind of a little in bit that comes forward a bit. That stops... That keeps us safe from the other ads. It also can... You can try and run out of here and uh, hit that and not get over it and push yourself off the edge. So be very careful. Just just as you're going in behind her, just this point here sticks out a little bit more. And as you can see there, it can push you off. So this is what I was saying. The boss hasn't unshielded, meaning there's an ad hiding. There, there he is. So we'll just take him out. And then what I'm going to do is I've got, I always have weakening grenades on. And I'm just going to put one on. And then back in here. Because that should be enough to get the next set of ads out. Now we've got Arc Knights, which is cool. But in, in, somewhere in this point, once we get the boss shielded again... Uh, once we get the boss shielded again, we're going to get two unstoppables. So, I, I don't leave yourself... And, and, and this is rule of thumb for, for, for doing master content, doing hard content. Uh, don't ever leave your... Try never to leave yourself exposed. I'm going to use a line from a very famous film, which is uh, Batman Begins. Don't... Uh, it's pretty cheesy to do that, but it's, it, it it's actually fits in here. Uh, don't substitute uh, sure footing for what's perceived to be a killing blow because sure footing is, is exactly what you need first. You need to be safe in your approach. I'm, you know, I try and stay always as safe as possible uh, because I, 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 I work on a principle which is repeatability. Everything should be repeatable. You know, if, if, if someone finishes something and they've done it by the skin of their teeth, for me, that's not a guide. That's, whew, look how lucky I was to almost not get this. So as you can see, I say this whenever I use this hand cannon. Uh, I use the hand cannon just because it's good for unstoppable, but there are other hand cannons that you can use in place of that because I get very, very, very little kills with this hand cannon. It's just... I use it because it's got explosive payload and I like the feel of it. But I also like the feel of the officer revolver, the, the Volpecula, you know. So there there we go, here's one unstoppable, so bang. I'm just going to do a little hop and put a galley on, just move in. Now one of them normally will push right at you. So we'll just fire that and that should take care of the cursed thrall as well. One of them's pushing, I'm just going to duck down because he'll come over. Very rarely will he actually fire. Very rarely will this unstoppable fire. Now, the reason I feel comfortable, confident, and it's, it's a big change for me because I never really used to use it that often. Uh, explosive rounds doing their job. Now, this, this August finishable. So I'm going to stop him. As soon as those little, little lit up things on his back kind of go away, that means he's finishable again. Uh, we're looking for the ad that's still up. So I'm just going to throw that just to take out that ad. Hopefully, oh, it was two cursed thralls. And it put some uh, weakening effect on on, on uh, Hash Ladoon. And there you go, guys. And as you can see, I got an exotic. I got myself, uh, I got myself a palindrome. I didn't actually get it. I've got a good one, but I didn't get a good one from these runs. And that's the run, guys. Uh, very simple. Just follow exactly what I was doing. As you can see, I got 521 Vanguard points just for doing my first one. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate your support, as always. I'll get my themed night fallout, and then we'll have a look at the GM towards the weekend. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy, enjoy the run. I hope you did. And I will see you guys in the next video.